Good afternoon. I am Wade Crump. I'm going to talk about Introduction to Quality Assurance, or QA. Uh, I've been involved with OpenStreetMap for about three years, a little over three years. I've been in the GIS mapping, cartography, programming, testing, specifications, data analysis space for just a little under three decades. I am not representing my company, so anything that I say or do is not indicative of my company. Standard disclaimer rules apply. Thank you. So, what is quality assurance? Wikipedia says quality assurance is a way of preventing mistakes in manufactured products. But we're really not manufacturing a product, and we have no approval process. And you, some of you probably saw how well the approval process worked for Google Maps recently with the Android. Um, so how can we find and fix errors and maintain high quality data and maps? Well, we can visualize the data, we can find known and suspect errors and warnings, and I'll use errors and warnings interchangeably, and we can query for features, so I'll go through all three of those. Um, for quality assurance, you, you kind of need to pick an area, it's a big world. I picked the lower 48, which is still a big, big pick. Um, and then you need a quality uh, assurance scope. So, you know, I have come from a navigation background, so routing and navigation attributes such as streets, uh, speed limits, addresses, buildings, water rail, etc. I am a volunteer, so I can map whatever the heck I like. Thank you. Um, so spatial completeness, that's you know, the first thing that people worry about, and that's do you have all the points and ways in your area? Uh, and that really needs field work, GPS traces, you know, smartphones, uh, photos. You can see my photo of an apartment building in Salt Lake City. You can see my trace uh, going through what was a farmer's field and now is a new subdivision. Uh, there's also notes and walking papers, depending on you know how you like to um, do field work. Um, and of course, there's air photos such as Bing, um, Mapbox. Now, if you zoom out in Mapbox, you sometimes find fresher images, which I find very entertaining. So I've zoomed out to 17, and you will occasionally find a nicer image with new subdivisions. And then, of course, other things like locally sourced um, data, such as the National AIP, Air Agriculture and Inventory. And then uh, tagging completeness. So for if you've got a fast food restaurant, does it have a name? Does it have the complete mailing address, cuisine, drive through etc.? What are the attributes that you're interested in, and does your subject area have these attributes? And then tag correctness, and this is a hard one for some people. Um, I've outlined everything in red on this slide is an incorrect value. So you know, I, I found someone put in MD as part of the postal code. And then I do a lot of mapping in DC because my wife is from there. I used to work down there. And I found multiple variations of how to not spell Washington DC as a city. The wiki is your friend. You know, you can research it. You can use it to research how to capture and fix features that you're not familiar with. Um, there's also a mailing list, the help, and forum. Uh, I tend to wander into things that I know nothing about, and I have to spin out pretty quickly to figure out how to work them. Um, and then some common errors before we get too deep into this. Uh, untagged ways, somebody's drawn geometry, but there is no attribute on it. Uh, tagging a road as one way, but not checking the other end, so that you've now made a very long one-way road and you've screwed up traffic. Uh, One-way dead ends, missing intersections, and you know, joining two roads together so that you get now mutant names like Main Street, semicolon, First Avenue. Uh, talking about editors, JOSM is the only editor that has a really nice in-editor validation system. So all of the data that you've downloaded and all of your edits, you can hit validation at any time and you'll see a series of warnings and errors. You can open each of those folders, go into each of those errors, select the error, and then zoom to your selection. And if you know how to fix that error, you can go off and fix it. Um, notes is a core feature of OpenStreetMap, and it's a way for users to communicate problems with one another. Um, 
they are of varying quality. Some of them are fantastic, some of them are garbage. And the reason some of them are garbage is because some of them are from anonymous users and some of them are from uh, automated mapping tools like a, a smartphone routing application. And they'll say something like, you know, the speed is incorrect. Well, that's not actionable intelligence. And then some are, uh, I've seen in the Washington area, some are just notes basically to the mapper, from the mapper. You know, add some street lights here. Well, okay, that's good, but it's not necessarily a very high quality note. Before notes were come, I'm sorry, um, here's some notes on a graphic. The red notes are open, the green are resolved, and they will disappear after about a week. And clicking on the note opens the comment. And before notes were popular, fix me was the way to do it. And what a fix me is, is it's a tag on a feature so that when a mapper knows or suspects that there's a problem. Uh, fix me equals yes, I've seen a lot of these. They're kind of vague. Uh, and then when you find a fix me and you know what to do with it and you fix the problem, remove the tag so that no one else has to go through this. Uh, my graphic here at the bottom has a fix me of dual carriageway, and it also shows a one way equals yes, which means most likely it's been fixed. Uh, and here's some fix me's in OpenStreetMap Inspector. Um, another way to, to find errors is just simple map views. Uh, you know, there's the standard map, but then there's also cycle map. If you look very closely, there's a gap in the Cyan route. Um, there's transport map, which is for buses and rail. Uh, humanitarian, which is mostly infrastructure, so it's going to be roads and buildings. Uh, open railway map. I find this one cool because it dims to a nice gray all of the underlying data and pops the important data, which in this case is railroads. And I'm a big rail fan, so I think this is an important thing. Um, another one is open fire map, and this one has fire hydrants, fire stations, and hospitals for EMS types. Um, company out of Britain uh, called ITO World has 150 different views for QC data. Um, this one is speed limits in miles per hour. This one is railroad crossings, and I've screwed up some railroad crossings, and I'm trying to make amends. So uh, there is a very subtle distinction between a level crossing and a crossing. Again, the wiki is your friend. So using QA tools. False positives are flagged items that really aren't mistakes. Uh, the tool may not have caught up with what the wiki or the current practice is. Um, False negatives are things that the tool just isn't going to catch. Either it's outside of what it can do or it's something like a street name where it just doesn't know what the name is. And you know, do not make the mistake of deleting the feature to fix the problem. Figure out what's going wrong and you know, be gentle to the map. Uh, the best QA tools have good descriptions of the errors and warnings. They have navigation to, say, a city, and will launch your favorite editor. And then many tools will allow you to mark the error as fixed. One day this bus was parked outside of my work, so I had to take a picture of this. Uh, continuity with change. Again, be gentle when you're fixing things. Uh, try to figure out what the mapper intended uh, when you're making corrections. And now for a few QA tools. The first one I discovered was Keep Right. It does not have a zoom, but it does have several continental starting locations. And then once you get one of those, you can apply your own lat long. It generates a huge number of errors, and you can pick and choose with some um, check boxes as to which errors you want to display. And it does one of my favorites on tagged ways, intersections without nodes, gas stations without a name, places of worship without a religion, et cetera. It only shows you 100 errors at a time and basically starting from the center of the screen and working outward. And the developer wants to give it away, so if you know PHP and want to run a server with a planet file, he'd love to hear from you. And this brings up uh, one 
concern, which is I think every slide that I'm showing you, all of the tools and the views are based on dedicated individuals and companies. These aren't being run by OpenStreetMap or OpenStreetMap Foundation. So this dedicated individual or company could stop supporting the tool. Just a little footnote. Um, here's a view of keepright.at, and this is, of course, Australia. Austria, I know this. Um, and it shows one of my favorites, which is the cyan wiggly arrows are one-way dead ends. And this is in Gaithersburg, Maryland. Um, my favorite named QA tool is QA tool. And this is run by a gentleman in Switzerland. And it shows unnamed roads as red and orange on a background of OpenStreetMap tiles. Uh, it also can show addressed and unaddressed buildings. It has a zoom to location and a five minute refresh. This is amazingly quick. So it doesn't do a lot of things, but it does everything it does extremely well. Um, here's some unnamed roads in Houston, new subdivision. And here is, again, Washington, D.C., one of my local favorites. All of the green buildings have addresses. All of the red buildings do not have addresses. And you can see that there was a huge import, and we got the buildings. We're still working on the addresses. Um, another tool is OSM Inspector. It offers 15 different views of the data, including addressing, routing, rail, geometry, tagging, public transport, et cetera. Um, the addressing is my current favorite. Uh, in this view, I'm showing orange buildings that have addresses, and then red dots for street names of the addresses that aren't matching the way. So we have a disconnect between the address on the building and the street that's running outside the front of the building. And the reason for that is because the import is using abbreviated addresses, which is wrong, and the street names on the ways are spelled out, which is correct. Um, another tool that I discovered and I used a lot, um, but I've not been as happy with it recently because some of the challenges aren't as interesting to me, is Map Roulette. And this basically takes you to various places and shows you a single error at a time and asks you to fix it or skip it. And if you have a class of errors, you can talk to them and possibly upload it. The code is available on GitHub. And this is the opening screen. And in this case, you're seeing all sorts of things like missing New York City bicycle lanes. Now, this is also by Telnav. And what their program that I really like a lot is called BattleGrid. This is the only tool that I'm showing you that is US-based. And it's the only tool that is geometry based. So it takes Tiger 2014, overlays it onto OpenStreetMap, and produces basically a diff. So wherever it's finding a lot of differences between the two, it's um, prioritizing those, it's coloring little squares. Uh, it does not have navigation, but once you get into it, you can add your own lat long to the bottom of the URL. So here's a sample, and on the left you see lots of green squares. Uh, the darker colors mean it is, there are more errors in it. Uh, the lighter colors, fewer errors. The orange is urban, the green is rural, and the black ones have been completed. This is a great way to waste a lot of time because I love putting in new streets. Um, and that brings me to a quick digression onto Tiger. Tiger is the Census Bureau's map of the US with roads and rail and all sorts of wonderful things, but it's a map for counting people. Geometry is kind of an afterthought, as long as you're kind of close and everybody's happy at Tiger. Um, it was used as a massive import in 2007, and it's the basis for everything we're doing in the US. Um, but a lot of it has been reworked. In some areas, they did not use Tiger. They used like Massachusetts. 
and it's uh, GIS, and it's not suitable for routing without doing a lot of things like adding on ways and bridges and removing nodes that allow you to tunnel through a bridge onto a surface street, et cetera. Um, and last, this is not really a QA tool. This is overpass. It's a query engine, um, and it has export functionality. So you can do wonderful ad hoc queries. For example, fix me equals dual carriageway. Um, this is a thing I like to do in rural areas because there are a lot of these tagged, and you just d basically divide the highway in half for better routing. Um, another one that scares me that I can actually find these things are source equals Google. This should not be happening unless it's like google.com slash a book. Um, people using Google is inappropriate, and it also has a wizard. So. In the wizard, I said name equals front runner, and I chopped that uh, query. It gives you the full expanded query into just the relation so that I got rid of the points and the ways. And then I get this nice rail line uh, in Salt Lake City. And then I took that, exported it to GeoJSON, read it into QGIS, which is an open source GIS package. And then I can zoom in and look along the rail line, and I found an old section of Front Runner that I needed to fix. And I fixed it, of course. Um, QGIS also has an overpass plugin, which means that you can basically do the same thing within QGIS quickly, um, one step analysis, and someday I will actually get to the point where I have some code that can do some really cool things with, you know, comparing addresses that have been imported with. OpenStreetMap and see where things have fallen out. Um, missing topics, since this was only 20 minutes, um, there were only so many QA tools I could cover. There's many more out there. Uh, there's monitoring tools so that you can watch the map. Uh, there's tag info so that you can see what people are actually using tag-wise. And if you find tags that have very low numbers, then you probably know that they're screwed up or that it's just not the right tag. Um, there's also vandalism and edit wars, and those are referred to the data, ma the data working group. And last, one more QA tool, OSM, OSE. This is a great tool. It will take a full 20 minutes. Stay tuned to the next um, session. Uh, the one thing I love about this tool is you can log in and see all of the edits that are tagged to you. Now, it doesn't. Uh, sorry, all of the errors that are tagged to you. This doesn't mean that you made the mistake, just that you were the last person to touch that um, way or node, and the error is related. I'm done, thank you very much. Uh, open the floor to questions. Yes, sir. When it goes red. The question was, do I find more edits from manual editing or from imports? Um, I would say the, the Tiger import in many areas is really much worse, but uh, a lot of people really don't understand that we are trying to route on this data. So if it's cartographically beautiful, they're quite happy not putting a street name on the dual carriageway that they just added uh, or adding intersections. So it, it's really a mixed bag. Um, Tiger still needs a hell of a lot of work. And one of those um, slides that you can get is reviewed Tiger from uh, ITO World. Any additional questions?
I'm sorry, I'm really not following your question. I, I can talk to you after. Yes, sir. Should I yell? Okay, I'm there. All right, <laughs> I'm not yelling. Thank you, uh, Wade, for your presentation. I really like these topics. Um, talked a lot about geometry issues and attributes issues. Do you have any comments on tools that would help us with, um, how, how, how can I put this, uh, how current the data is, maybe for the same territory or same space, a set of data captured, I don't know, 15 years ago, and then compare it to a set of data of the same place today? The, that is a very difficult problem, the comparison of two geometries. Um, most of those tools that I showed you really don't deal with geometry at all. Uh, yeah, he, he's mentioning uh, Martine has staleness maps, and um, they basically show how how unedited an, an area is. Picking up. Yes. Um, so you described the, you know, the evaluation of OSM compared to Tiger in the U.S. And I'm aware of some other efforts that have used commercial data to validate or assess the completeness of OSM data in, say, Germany or Ireland or places like that. What about um, in in less developed countries. Are you familiar with any tools or efforts that are underway to see whether OSM is capturing a high percentage of the road networks in, in least developed countries, say in Africa? Right, uh, the question is, um, are there any tools to, to assess the, the, the rate of capture of data in less developed countries and, and no, because the almost all of the tools are not geometry based. Yeah, uh, Tiger data is is huge with errors, and um, a lot of these tools focus on Tiger data, uh, geometry um, issues. A lot of the, the errors won't be found without visual inspection. Um, one ways are just impossible to find and fix without visual inspection, so it's, it's very hard to do. The staleness maps and the Tiger edited equals uh, no maps are helpful in that because they, they can help you figure out where people have completely not touched the maps.
birds of a feather at 2 p.m. tomorrow in room C. So I think this mic just finally came back on. So those of you who are interested in that question of developing country validation of OSM data, we'll have a birds of a feather at uh, room C tomorrow at 2 p.m. Thank you. That was a birds of a feather session tomorrow at 2 p.m., which isn't going to be helpful because this is being recorded, so nobody will care when it's recorded. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody. I think my time is up. <laughs>